Hello, howdy. How are y'all doing? Good? I hope so. Um, I am that one guy, Tim. I hope y'all would already know that. But anyways, um, this is a tutorial about encoding. I know, I'm doing another one. Um, but this time it's about encoding a, a soft-subbed MKV and turning it into a hard-subbed MP4. And we're going to be doing this with X264 and some other things, basically... Yeah, so go ahead and let's get started by heading over to the Anavoid forums, all right? And what I want you to do here is I want you to find my other tutorial that I, excuse me, my other tutorial that I wrote um, a while back. So find the how to slash media tutorial section, which is right here. And we're going to find my tutorial right here. And what I want you to do is I want you to read this section and follow it okay so install these things download them or whatever okay and follow what it says right there and um, yeah so after you do that there's a couple other things that you should get and we're gonna go ahead and sh um, do that right here so go to this website Haley dot su slash mkv and download the matroska splitter alright and install it now whenever you are installing this I have it right here um let's run it agree yes okay um don't mess with this stuff just uncheck this box and the reason is if you leave it check marked every time that you try to play an mkv it's gonna open up and MIDI or Windows MIDI player okay and we don't want that so install it and then you're gonna be good and the reason why is because you're gonna want a DLL file that comes with this alright so after that installs go to computer C program files and find your Haley folder right here go into there and copy this DLL okay this one right here AVSS dot DLL so control C to copy it or right click and copy and then go back and find your AVI synth folder right here go to the plugins folder and then paste that in there right paste as you can see I already have it so paste it in there and then you'll be good to go and the reason behind this is so that you can use direct show source 2 DSS2 um, in your AVI synth script okay as you can see right here and you're gonna wanna use this for H.264 videos which is what most MKV files are encoded in so or what they are what they're holding I, w I guess you would say so alright good next download YAMB okay from this website right here alright you guys got the URL alright and download this one the middle one alright install it and run it and basically what this does is it's gonna let us create our mp4 and the reason why we're not using MEGUI to make the mp4 directly is because I'm pretty sure that there is a problem with MEGUI's um, or with MEGUI encoding directly into an mp4 so we're not gonna do that um, next um, what we're gonna do is after you have all of these things we're going to create our AVI synth script alright so go ahead and create a new text document by right clicking going to new text document and it should open up something like this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our AVI synth script so we would type in DSS2 uh, parentheses quote and then we're gonna take our video the one that we're using to encode and we're going to copy the name of it now if you guys can't see your file extensions like you can here on mine um, you're just probably gonna just have to type .mkv into here okay at the very end just type .mkv alright so we're gonna end it with the quote and inferences go down and type in text sub whoops quote like that and oh Oops, we forgot to extract all of our things from our MKV. So, as you can see, I already have mine done, which was this video. Put it into there. 
and I opened it up and I extracted the subtitles, the audio, and all of the fonts already. Actually, I don't have the fonts right here, but here's the subtitles and the audio. But so make sure you extract the audio the subtitles, and you see all these things that say X True Type font. Extract all of them, and it's very important that you do so. And the reason is because those are the fonts that the fan subbers used to style the subtitles so if you don't have those installed you're not going to be able to see the styles that they created for the video whenever you go to hard code it okay so just highlight them right click whoops right click and click install if you're using Windows Vista or Windows 7 if you're using Windows XP you're just gonna copy those over or move them over to your font folder which is located in C slash Windows and then fonts okay and then they're gonna be installed and then we can delete them from here okay good alright now now that that's done let's go ahead and put our subtitles into our AVI send script so rename copy paste quote parentheses and we are done writing our script. Next we're going to save it. So go to file, save as, and very important that you select all files here. Okay? And now we can type whatever we want our AVI send script to be named. So like um boo on you dot avs. That's the important part is the dot avs. Make sure you have that. And then save. There she goes. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open that up in MEGUI. So go ahead and open up MEGUI and we're going to open up our deal that we just made. There it is. Open it. And when you open this, you should see a pop up that looks like this and you can scrub through it and see your hard coded subs. There we go. And um, we can close that out now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're, we are going to make sure that the file format is selected as MKV and I already explained why so select MKV here and then we're gonna go up to X264 and we're gonna configure it uh, excuse me a little tired um so click the config button it should open up to X264 configuration and make sure that there's a check mark in here if there's not you're gonna be you're not gonna be able to see all the goodies so check it and for mode select constant quality and now this might seem a little odd but for a higher quality of video you're gonna want a lower number of quality I know it's weird but anyways don't go lower than 18 I probably wouldn't ever go lower than 18 unless you're directly ripping from like a blu-ray or a DVD or something so 20 should be good I wouldn't go any higher than 22 and make sure that for AV at, or AVC level, you have it selected at unrestricted. And next we go over to frame type. Um, make sure there's a check mark in D blocky. <sighs> Sorry. Um, make sure there's a check mark in D blocking because if you browse through your video and you see that there's a bunch of blocking in it, you can just check mark this and kind of raise this up a little bit. I wouldn't go very high at all, okay, because the default is zero. And, um, yeah. Okay? Good. Next is number of B frames and number of reference frames and adaptive B frames. Um, for number of B frames, I have mine set to 16, and my number of reference frames, I have set to 16, and for adaptive B frames, I have set to optimal. Now, the reason behind mine being so high is because I have a six core CPU. If you have like a quad core that these settings might be all right it'll still be a little slow um, but if you have a uh, dual core CPU I would highly suggest lowering these numbers down quite a bit now for adaptive B frames I would not go to zero for off you want them on at least so set it to fast if you have a dual core or something all right okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to rate control. And, excuse me, I yawned again, I know. I don't know what's wrong. Anyways, you can just copy the things that I have here. And then, whenever you're done with this, um, alright, 
we can go over here to analysis. Now, what's important here is having this set to 10, um, trellis set to always, PSYRD and PSY trellis. I would leave them that default. And the reason is because a single tenth of a change can greatly um, change the file size of your final output. All right? So I just leave them at default. Make sure that these boxes are all checked right here. Okay. Now let me explain something about constant quality just real quick that I forgot to mention. Um, this is going to be a one pass thing. Okay. And what it's going to do is you're not going to be able to know the exact file size that it's going to finish with. Okay. So basically it's going to use your quality setting right here and it's going to use a bit rate like an average bit rate or something and then it's going to try to keep the same quality for every single frame in the picture throughout the entire video so it'll use a higher bit rate for certain scenes and a lower bit rate for other scenes but there's no like cap on the bit rate other than your quality setting right here okay all right now let's go over here to the misc part and don't worry about this it's something that i was using earlier um, this right here is what we're wanting to worry about color matrix Okay, now what this does is it makes sure that everybody sees this, the colors as they should be, no matter what monitor they're using and stuff, or what player they're using. Okay, so I'm gonna just reference this real quick. Um, we're gonna use Color Matrix BT709 because we are using a 720p video. All right, so that's what we're gonna be putting right here. Color Matrix BT7 09 okay and you should see it down here and what's very important is that you have two dashes I accidentally have more but anyways yeah I have the two dashes alright next make sure your threads are set to zero don't manually set them if they're set to zero it will automatically use um, however many cores you have in your CPU alright you'll be good so click OK it'll save it and then you can enqueue it go over here to the Q, run it, let it finish. When it finishes, then we're going to open up YAMB and we're, oops, I think I closed it. Um, so open up YAMB, double click on this, just drag and drop the MKV that it made into there. I don't have mine, so I'll just drop one that's already been made like this. And as you can see, it can't read this, um, the sub, so. Yeah, don't worry about that. So imagine that you only have this part right now, just the video. So we would take the audio that we extracted earlier, put it in there, and then you would just make sure that it's the output is what you want it to be. Hit next, run it, and you should be finished. And you can upload it and go tell all your friends how amazing you are and how you're an awesome encoder now and all of these good things, right? Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions feel free to ask and yeah have fun I mean oh don't worry if it's going really slow it might go really slow okay um, it could take you anywhere between 45 minutes to five hours or more for one episode I know it seems like it's nuts but that's how it's gonna work alright at least you know you're getting good quality and the videos are going to look good, right? That's what we're, that's what's important. That's what we want. All right. So, enjoy. Have fun. Cheers. Goodbye.